What is going on, Locks Mob, and welcome back to the Locks DFS NHL Breakdown. I'm your host, Adi Narang, and I will be breaking down this seven-game main slate that we have on tap uh, for DraftKings on Friday, uh, I believe it's Jan 4th. So yeah, I'll go ahead and break it down. It's a really straightforward slate, so I'm looking forward to jumping into this. Before I do that real quick, if you want to follow me on Twitter, at ReallyAddy, that's where you can go ahead and do so. I'm also revitalizing like my Instagram page. I was using that sort of just like personally, but now I figured I might as well just use that sort of in relation with Lock. So I'm going to be posting a lot of free bets there. I post a lot of bets here as well. I'm really transparent about like what we're betting on, how we're doing in hockey and stuff. So if you're interested in any of that or just want to keep up to date with like what I'm doing, um, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at really Addy, and then Instagram is Addy Narang with an underscore at the end of it. Uh, both, I recommend both. Both are good follows. Um, and as always, we are running that giveaway as we do in every video. If you want to be entered into that giveaway for a free NBA, NHL, or uh, NFL season pass or sports betting, we can just throw in sports betting pass as well. Um, go ahead and like this video, comment something below. Uh, just throughout the week as these videos keep coming out as Addy's actions come out all of that um, And then make sure you're subscribed to the Locks CFS YouTube channel and you'll be good to go You'll be entered into that giveaway. So go ahead and do that and uh, Let's get right into this slate. So as I said, it's a really super straightforward slate There's really one smash team on this state on this entire slate and that's Colorado um, You can just tell that the game opened at a 5.5 team total. It's now is in the six a uh, majority of that movement has come on the Colorado side of uh, of the total with them with their team total jumping from 3-2 to 3-6. They grow in odds from minus 190 to minus 201 despite receiving 59% of the bets. So pretty pretty good. Sharp money's on them. Some public money's on them. Um, I'm on them. Colorado at home, as I always mention, Nathan McKinnon at home ha has the highest floor and highest ceiling of any DFS player. And I feel like on today's slate, you just kind of have to start with him. Uh, make sure he's in your lineup, and I, and I recommend doing anything you can to jam in as much uh, Colorado 1 as you can. Um, that Colorado 1 line, by the way, let me pull it up for you guys. It is Mac Landeskog, Rantanen, and all correlates really well on the first team power play as well. All three guys skate together with Confer and Barry, so as much exposure to Colorado, the better on this slate for me. Um, if you if you want to pay sort of in that mid to high price range at center, the two guys I would look towards are Evgeny Malkin at 6.1K and Tyler Sagan at 6.9K. Um, Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn just got injured, so that kind of hurts that Dallas one line that they just put together. Uh, it's now Sagan, Ben, and Valerie Niskanen, who's 2.5K. We'll talk about him. Um, so that kind of is a knock on Sagan, but he may be asked to do a little bit more of the shooting. He already shoots a ton. Um, so he's just sort of a good value at 6.9K, and it's it's more or less the same with Evgeny Malkin. Um, that team total is 3.5, which is nice. It's rising. It's the second highest team total on the slate. And Evgeny Malkin being 6.1K is just way too cheap. Um, there's not a 1.5K talent differential between Malkin and Crosby, or at least there shouldn't be. It should be more like 500. I, I could see Evgeny Malkin being in the low sevens. Um, so I would definitely take advantage of this price tag while we're there. And then the last guy, I'm interested in some Arizona for some value. New Jersey, uh, they're on the third game of a road trip, I believe. Um, still playing without Taylor Hall. Just not a good defensive team. And, and missing Taylor Hall, who's one of their key offensive weapons, but does help them defensively. is just a, It's a recipe for disaster. Uh, Arizona is one of these teams that we're looking for a lot of positive regression for them. They're, they're, they're bottom in the league in, shooting, in shot percentage, so you'd like that to regress positively a bit. But they still fare pretty well in a Corsi 4 percentage, which is just sort of how much they're dominating the puck play. So they're playing well, just not getting a lot of puck luck. And I think New Jersey's playing a bit over their head. So definitely like getting Stepan at uh, 4.3K to take advantage of that. Moving on to winger, though. So sort of the same thing with the high price guys. I'm going to make every effort I can to get in the Colorado guys. I know they're expensive. I'll, I'll start with Miko Rantanen because... We saw um, when when shit kind of hits the fan for Colorado, they, they're willing to move Landeskog off of their first line. So just because of the slight risk that that adds, Miko, just, he's been better this year. He's a better player. Uh, he shoots more. Um, I'll go with Miko for 7.6K, and I think he's probably my top option again, even with Ovechkin on the slate. As always, you can't go wrong with Ovi. I mean, since NHL DFS... Uh, since its conception, Ovi, or inception, I should say, um, 
Ovi has been the premier DFS NHL player. So you can never go wrong jamming him in. Um, I just probably don't think I'll be doing it. I'll, I'll be paying up for Colorado. Coming down a little bit, I like Jonathan Marcheseau and Patrick Hornquist. This 5.9 and 6K little combo here. I think Hornquist is a good guy to pair with Evgeny Malkin at 6K. It's about sort of where he should be priced. He's no longer like 5'4", but 6K is still reasonable. He shoots the puck a lot. He's the net front guy on a lethal Pittsburgh power play. Um, and they're projected to score the second highest goals on the slate. So definitely interested there. And uh, Marsh is at 5.9K. I mean, who would have ever thought that we would see Brandon Perry at 6.2K and Jonathan Marsh is at 5.9K? Like, Jonathan Marsh is their stud, their elite shot rate winger. Brandon Perry sort of this young guy that they called up to fill Max Pacioretty's role on the second line. And all he's done is scored a goal in every single game he's played. Um, he still shouldn't be priced at 6.2K, though. He's not even skating on the first team power play. Um, Vegas does use their second team power play a good bit. Um, but I'm just not interested in paying 6-2 for Perry. I think you could. I think you could pay it. And no one's going to. Um, because he used to he was just like 3-6 not that long ago. So no one's paying 6-2 for him. But I, if you want to get a, a, a player who scored in every game at minimal, minimal ownership, go there. But for my money, I'll be going with Vegas 1. I think the price on Marcia So and Riley Smith is really fair. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm really interested in. Um, also Clayton Keller at 4.7 K for all the reasons I mentioned, Stepan is also in play. Um, moving on to defense. <clears throat> so as, uh, as we know, cause it's been a couple of days since the news, Bufflin is out, um, for the next month or so. So, in the interim, um, that elevated Josh Morrissey to a power play one role, Jacob Truba and Tyler Myers on the power play two. Morrissey, uh, his price tag is a lot better on FanDuel, where he's sitting in the low 4Ks. Here, he's sitting at 5K, where he's still in play, um, just because he's a guy who does shoot the puck a lot, and he really does benefit from a a first-team power play role, especially if his minutes are going to hover around this 26 mark that we see with Buffalo now. He's certainly in play. Um, I really like Tyson Berry, as I mentioned. Colorado is sort of my first option for everything. Uh, like I said, as much Colorado as I can get in, um, sort of the better. Um, and then coming down here, the last guy I wanted to talk about, there he is. Uh, last guy I wanted to talk about, Jacob Chikrin. Um, I, I mention him every time I sort of talk about Arizona, but he's one of the safer NHL DFS players uh, you could have. Um, just a super high shot on goal, super high block shot floor. And he's typically going to skate around 22 minutes a game. So getting that at 4K is really safe. Um, he pairs with Derek Stepan on the second team power play, which is pretty nice. Um, they're well correlated with him being sort of the, the on the blue line and him being the net front guy. Um, so I, I think he's an interesting play and, and will remain as such for as long as he's 4K. Um, I just think he's sort of, sort of like you can lock yourself into at least two points just by plugging him in. Um Anyways, moving on to goalie. Uh, again, like I said, see what you have. Uh, see see where all your skaters are from, what teams they play on, and then just go ahead and play the goalie on that team. Um, based on this video, it could be Philip Grubauer at 7.8K. I think he'd probably be my top option. Um, but I also like Darcy Kemper over here at 7.6K. He's not nearly as big of a favorite. Um, and there's a little bit of line movement in Jersey's favor. But this could be a game where I could, I could bet on Arizona to win. Um I just feel like they, they're probably, like I mentioned, for everything I mentioned for the Stepan video, I think it's a case of one team due to regress positively, one team due to regress negatively. Um, or you can go, you know, the Vegas goalie. Go with whoever you want. Just make sure you're sending your prayers out because goalie is a shit show every night. Um, anyways, with that being said, thank you guys for checking out this video. As always, uh, go ahead, follow me on all those platforms. Enter yourself into the giveaway. Um, I hope this video helped you, and I hope you guys make some money tonight. Peace.